When people talk about PC building, cooling systems, or CPU performance, one tiny detail often gets overlooked, thermal paste. It's that small gray or silver compound that beginners sometimes forget to apply, and experts swear is critical for keeping your system running smoothly. But what exactly is thermal paste? Why does it matter so much? And what's really going on between your CPU and cooler that makes this gooey substance essential? In today's video, we'll break down the science, the purpose, and even the different types of thermal pastes out there. So by the end, you'll understand why this unassuming material has such a huge impact on your computer's performance and lifespan. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. At its core, thermal paste is a highly thermally conductive compound designed to enhance the transfer of heat between two surfaces, most commonly between a CPU or GPU and its heat sink or cooler. Now here's something that surprises most beginners. Even though the surface of a CPU looks perfectly smooth and shiny, under a microscope, it's full of microscopic imperfections, tiny pits, and uneven textures. The same goes for the base of your cooler. These tiny gaps trap air. And because air is a poor conductor of heat, it creates resistance that severely limits how much heat can be pulled away from your processor. That's where thermal paste comes in. Its job is to fill every microscopic gap, remove insulating air pockets, and allow heat to move efficiently from the chip to the heat sink. Thermal paste is made from a mixture of carrier fluids, often silicone or synthetic oils, and thermally conductive particles. These particles can vary widely depending on the type of thermal paste. The most common type is ceramic-based paste, which uses ceramic powders like aluminum oxide or zinc oxide. These are non-conductive, which means they won't cause electrical shorts even if you accidentally get some on your motherboard. Ceramic pastes are affordable, reliable, and suitable for most everyday PC builds. But then we have metal-based pastes, which are often made with microparticles of silver, aluminum, or even liquid metal alloys like gallium. These offer significantly higher thermal conductivity making them a better choice for high-performance systems, overclocking, or intense workloads. However, the downside is that many metal-based pastes are electrically conductive, meaning a tiny spill can potentially damage your components if not applied carefully. One of the most advanced categories is liquid metal thermal paste which isn't really a paste at all, but a thin metallic alloy. It's incredibly efficient at heat transfer, far better than standard pastes, making it highly popular among hardcore overclockers. But here's the catch. Liquid metal is electrically conductive and corrosive to aluminum, so it must be used with extreme caution and only on heat sinks made of compatible materials like copper or nickel. It's powerful, but definitely not beginner-friendly. For most people, a quality ceramic or metal-based paste is more than enough to keep temperatures healthy. So why does thermal paste matter so much? Because modern CPUs generate a staggering amount of heat. Even efficient processors can reach temperatures of 70 to 90 degrees Celsius under heavy load. Without proper heat transfer, your CPU would throttle its speed, degrade faster, or even shut down to protect itself. Thermal paste ensures that heat moves quickly and smoothly into the cooler, allowing the processor to maintain stable performance. Think of it like the engine oil in your car. Not something that makes the car run by itself, but something that ensures the machine runs efficiently and doesn't destroy itself over time. Mm -hmm. 
How often should you replace thermal paste? The answer varies based on usage, temperature, and the quality of the paste. Many builders replace it every two to three years, but high-quality pastes can last even longer if temperatures remain stable. If you notice rising temperatures, system instability, or unusual fan noise, it may be time to clean off the old paste and reapply a fresh layer. And speaking of applying paste, there's still debate around the best method. The pea-sized dot, the cross pattern, the spread method. But the truth is that most modern coolers will spread the paste evenly once pressure is applied. The real key is not the shape you apply, but using the right amount. Too little leaves gaps, and too much can cause spillover or uneven contact. Another important factor is the thermal interface material's durability. Over time, some paste can dry out or pump out, meaning they slowly get squeezed away from the center due to repeated heating and cooling cycles. This leads to poor heat transfer and rising CPU temperatures. High-quality pastes are formulated to resist drying and maintain stable viscosity over long periods. That's why experienced builders often invest in reputable brands. Not because they want to overspend, but because a few degrees cooler can mean longer component lifespan and more consistent performance. So the next time you open your computer and see that thin layer of gray compound sandwiched between your CPU and cooler, don't underestimate it. That tiny layer is doing some of the heaviest lifting in your entire setup. It's the invisible bridge that allows your processor to operate at peak efficiency, protect itself from overheating, and sustain performance during long gaming sessions, demanding workloads, or overclocking adventures. Thermal paste may look simple, but it's one of the unsung heroes of the computing world, and now you know exactly why. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.